as we continue our exploration of the inventory management topic, I want to spend some time to talk about risk pooling. I will explain the meaning of the term risk pooling in just a few moments. For now, let me just say that risk pooling is a set of powerful strategies that allow us to reduce uncertainty and thus inventory requirements as well as associated costs. Let me start out with an example. We're looking at a retailer that operates in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. In fact, the retailer currently has distribution centers, or DCs, in each of these states. Of course, these DCs have to cope with both lead time and demand uncertainty. And as we know, one way to deal with such risk is to hold buffer inventory, or safety stock, in each DC. The sum of these inventories is the amount of safety stock in the entire distribution system. Of course, this inventory is good in the sense that it allows the retailer to provide good customer service. But it is also bad in the sense that safety stocks, like any type of inventory, generate holding costs. So here's the key question we want to address. Is there a way to lower inventory requirements and associated costs while maintaining the same level of customer service? The answer is yes. And more specifically, the answer is yes through risk pooling. Let's return to our example. Let's imagine the retailer centralizes its distribution system by consolidating all DC operations in a single DC in, say, Kentucky. Previously, Kentucky served a rather small market area. With the increase in the size of its market, the total volume and, importantly, the degree of lead time demand uncertainty will increase as well. In other words, the Kentucky DC will need to hold more safety stock after DC centralization than it did before because it is now also serving stores in Ohio and Indiana. And this leads us to the all-important question. Would the amount of safety stock at the newly centralized DC be equal to or less than the sum of safety stocks the retailer held before consolidating the three DCs into a single facility? As you may already guess, the answer to this question is most likely yes. Let me explain this using a simplified example where we consolidate just two stocking locations. Let's look at this demand pattern for the Kentucky DC before DC centralization. As you can see, there is quite a bit of demand variability. And variability means uncertainty. Now let's add demand for Ohio into the mix. Again, we can see that demand varies substantially over time. But now look at what happens if we consolidate the Kentucky and Ohio market areas, as this new red line indicates. Much of this variability averages out. And that means that we will have a much, quote unquote, skinnier distribution of lead time demand. In other words, there is less risk. And that means lower safety stocks and lower safety stock holding costs. Now let's recap what we know so far. The centralization of stocking locations may allow us to reduce lead time demand uncertainty. This is what we call risk pooling. In our example, this means that we're pooling lead time demand risk across three market areas, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Risk pooling will be especially beneficial when lead time demands are negatively correlated. This is what we saw just a moment ago. The fluctuations in demand were partially smoothed out because whenever demand was high in one place, it was low in the other place. We can call this the quote-unquote offsetting or smoothing effect. 
and the resulting reduction in variability or uncertainty allows us to lower safety stock requirements and costs. We can even measure the expected percent reduction in safety stocks by means of the portfolio effect. Let me explain. The portfolio effect can be calculated as 1 minus the ratio of total safety stocks after centralization divided by the sum of safety stocks before centralization. Let's again simplify a little and just look at the case where we consolidate two DCs into one. So the portfolio effect will equal 1 minus SS central divided by SS1 plus SS2. Of course, we know that safety stocks are simply the product of the standard normal variate Z that is associated with a given service level and the standard deviation of lead time demand. Let's just say that Z will be the same both before and after DC centralization. This lets us simplify the calculation of the portfolio effect even more. It will be equal to 1 minus sigma DL central, the deviation of lead time demand we now have with a centralized distribution center, divided by the sum of sigma DL1 and sigma DL2, the deviation of lead time demands before centralization. Now bear with me for a moment. How do we figure out what the standard deviation of lead time demand will be after centralization? You might think it's just the sum of the standard deviations for locations 1 and 2 respectively. But remember that we cannot simply add standard deviations here. The true calculation for sigma DL central is what you see in the numerator here. This may look complicated, but it's really just math. The point is this. You see the Greek letter rho highlighted in orange here? Rho denotes the correlation of lead time demands between locations 1 and 2. Recall that pairwise correlation coefficients range between negative 1, suggesting a perfect negative correlation, and positive 1, indicating a perfect positive correlation. So as we saw in the earlier example, when rho is negative, it reduces uncertainty and thus increases the portfolio effect. Now let's look at what happens when there is a positive correlation. Again, we see the demand pattern and associated variability for the Kentucky market. With a positive correlation, the pattern will be very similar for Ohio. So if we pool the two locations, we do not observe the smoothing effect we saw earlier. In other words, we're not able to reduce risk, and there is little to no benefit to risk pooling. We will work through some risk pooling problems in a series of Excel-based videos. These Excel demonstrations will cover different risk pooling methods. In this lecture, our conversation about risk pooling focused on pooling risk across stocking locations. So the centralization of stocking locations is one risk pooling method. But we can also pool risk across different products. In this case, we speak of SKU rationalization, where SKU stands for stock keeping unit. And then we can pool risk across suppliers. This is called order splitting. While all these risk pooling methods are quite different, they all rely on the same principle. By lowering exposure to risk, we can reduce inventory requirements and logistics costs. <music>